Senators Mitch McConnell and Rick Scott have not been getting along lately, mainly because for as much as I dislike Mitch McConnell, he's not a dumb guy. Rick Scott though, seems pretty stupid because he tried to cut certain social spending programs, privatize things like social security, which McConnell knows is the third rail, knows you should not try to cut because it will destroy them politically. Now, interestingly enough, Rick Scott's plan does have support from the Republican Party. There's no question about that. But more importantly, Rick Scott's plan to essentially do away with social security as we know it is something that is favored by the donors, particularly groups like Club for Growth, which is a billionaire funded organization that spends tens of millions of dollars each election cycle to ensure that they get people like Rick Scott elected. So eventually they can gut social spending programs like Medicare and Social Security. Now, before we get to McConnell and how he kind of plays into all of this, let's talk about what Club for Growth recently said in response to this tiff that McConnell and Rick Scott have with one another. They want McConnell to stop going against Rick Scott. They think McConnell is a bad guy for thinking strategically about what would hurt the party, what would help the party. And they have shown their support for Rick Scott because this is a billionaire organization that doesn't want to pay taxes to fund Social Security. So let's talk about what Rick Scott had proposed and why McConnell is against it. Now, it's an 11 point plan that Scott put out, and sub point seven and point six reads as follows. All federal let all federal legislation sunsets in five years. If a law is worth keeping, Congress can pass it again. The plan doesn't single out Medicare and Social Security specifically, but these are programs that were established by federal legislation and would thus disappear under Scott's proposal unless renewed every five years. Okay, let's just talk about Congress in the context of funding the government, passing a, an annual spending bill. We know what that's like. We know what it's like to see government shutdowns as a result of Republicans demanding cuts to social spending programs and what remains of our social safety net. So the idea of putting Medicare and Social Security up before Congress every five years would do exactly what you would suspect it would do. It would eventually just obliterate these programs. And that's why Scott proposed it in his big plan, which McConnell was against. Additionally, by the way, Scott initially proposed everyone in the United States should pay some federal income tax. Since about 40% of US households currently do not owe federal income tax, mostly because they don't make enough money. Scott effectively would have raised taxes on about 75 million households, the poorest households among us. So privatize or cut social security in order to save taxes for the wealthiest people in this country while simultaneously demanding that the poorest among us pay more in federal taxes. Great, I mean, it shows you exactly what the populism on the right looks like. I mean, when you compare the United States to other developed countries, what we have in terms of in terms of a social safety net is abysmal. But it's still not good enough for the billionaires in this country. They want less of a social safety net, which should blow your mind considering how many of our fellow Americans are living on the streets today. Can't afford rent, can't afford a mortgage, can't afford to send their kids to a decent college. Or if they're in an area that doesn't have decent public schools, can't send their kids to a private school because that's expensive. Can't afford health care, can't afford child care, can't afford elder care for their parents. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. No paid family leave, you want me to continue? But not only do Republicans love that, and not only do the billionaires who fund their campaigns love that, they wanna chip away at what's left. And Club for Growth loves that. That's the whole purpose of Club for Growth. They don't wanna pay taxes, so they wanna cut whatever social spending we might be engaging in. Now, of course, nearly all of them already pay other taxes. When we're talking about the poorest Americans, they might not pay federal income taxes, 
But they pay all sorts of other taxes, which has more of an impact on them economically than the taxes that the wealthiest people in this country pay. Um, so think of things like sales tax. Um, you know, if you're living in a high tax state, chances are they're probably paying something in state taxes as well. Now, um, we should talk a little bit about what uh, what's at play here between Mitch McConnell and Rick Scott. Why there's this growing beef between them because Rick Scott's just doing what his donors paid him to do. But McConnell's a little more strategic than that. McConnell understands that it's political suicide to go after Social Security and Medicare. So he immediately dismissed the plan and Rick Scott got real salty about it, okay? Now on a radio show in Kentucky um, the following week, McConnell tried to even distance himself from the Republican Party and the Republican Party from this proposal entirely. Let's listen. President Biden is out shopping his State of the Union claims and still selling the point that the Republicans, he names Rick Scott, that the Republicans want to sunset Social Security and Medicare. So is that true? Well, unfortunately, that was the Scott plan. That's not a Republican plan. That was the Rick Scott plan. The Republican plan, as I pointed out last fall, if we were to become the majority, there were no plans to raise taxes on happy American people or to sunset Medicare or Social Security. So it's clearly the Rick Scott plan. It is not the Republican plan. Now, I want to be a thousand percent clear. Cutting Social Security and Medicare absolutely is a Republican plan. There's no question about it. There's endless evidence of that in the form of television interviews, proposals to raise the retirement age, which by the very nature of doing that, you're cutting Social Security, okay? They want to raise the retirement age to 70, which is insane. So the only difference between Rick Scott and Mitch McConnell is that Mitch McConnell understood, hey, we're campaigning for the midterms and we're not going to attack incredibly popular social spending programs. <laughs> right as we're trying to get people or persuade people to vote for us. What are you doing? You're crazy. But Club for Growth and um, its billionaire president, David McIntosh, didn't like that. And so they just released a statement. This is a specific statement from David McIntosh, president of Club for Growth, dinging Mitch McConnell for this. Well, other Republicans have caved to massive tax and spend packages that have strained our economy. Rick Scott has consistently championed small government solutions that are meant to, of course, allow us to pay less in taxes. That's what I added, but I want to help you guys read between the lines. Centered around fiscal responsibility. And because of that, he's faced the unfounded and false attacks of liberal Democrats like President Biden and even establishment Republicans like Leader McConnell. Leader McConnell wants to cut Social Security too, and they know that. It's just that McConnell, again, isn't stupid enough to go through with that plan as they're campaigning for the midterms. Now, I thought that Biden really holding Republicans feet to the fire during the State of the Union was an important moment. He got them on record denying that they wanna cut Social Security, even though we all know they do wanna do that. And hopefully he continues to hold their feet to the fire. But we are in a precarious situation when we have corporate Republicans who have always been clear about how they want to gut our social safety net. Along with corporate Democrats who might not be as vociferous against Social Security or Medicare. But certainly in the past, they have been open to cutting it or cutting those two programs. So it, as precarious as it is, I don't want anyone to freak out because it is clear based on the reaction from Republicans during Biden's State of the Union that they don't want to deal with the political ramifications of cutting wildly popular social spending programs in the country. But it is something that we have to keep our eyes on and ensure that we don't waver in our fight and our support for these programs. Because the second we take our eye off the prize, the second we don't pay attention to what they're up to, I guarantee it, they will try to cut these programs. Now, uh, David McIntosh continued to say that Rick Scott has a proven conser is a proven conservative who has promoted economic growth and fought reckless spending in the Senate. The group's super PAC intends to spend big on Rick Scott's uh, behalf in the next 
in next year's election, which as of now features no Republican primary opponents. The group also spent a whopping $60 million on Senate races in the last election cycle alone. So these are moneyed interests. These are the very people who have captured our members of Congress, captured our legislature to the point where they don't really serve the best interests of their constituents and tend to serve the best interests of people who are already doing real well in this country, literal billionaires. And if you're wondering who those billions are, the last round of funding for Club for Growth came from two billionaires in particular, Jeff Yass and Richard Eulin. They don't need social security and they hate paying into it. And let me just mention, Part of what makes Social Security long lasting and popular, the reason why it's, it's considered untouchable by many is because it's a universal program. Sure, those at the very, very top might not need it. But when we see how easy it is for Americans to lose everything in this country, especially with our broken healthcare system that could cause you to go bankrupt in your elderly years. I think Americans understand the importance of maintaining these programs and ensuring that we don't privatize them or cut them in any way. Now, it's not that McConnell, again, doesn't want to cut Social Security. He wants to do it. He's just a little more strategic. He's looking for the right opportunity so the political ramifications won't be as awful. And McConnell has said, quote, I mean, it's just a bad idea. I think it will be a challenge for Scott to deal with this in his own reelection in Florida, a state with more elderly people than any state in America. And he's right about that. And according to a 2022 study, 88% of the 50 plus age cohort also identified Social Security as an extremely important issue when determining who to vote for. When broken down by party line, 91% of registered Democrats compared to 87% of Republicans and 83% of independents identified it as important or very important. Let's keep that graphic up for a second. Because 87% of Republican voters see Social Security as an extremely important issue when determining who to vote for. Mitch McConnell might be evil in his own ways, but make no mistake, homeboy's not dumb. Okay, he might be the smartest and most strategic Republican lawmaker in the country. And he's surrounded by morons who don't understand that, hey, you know, I get it. You're supposed to serve your donor, you're slave to your donor. That's the only thing you really care about. But you gotta at least provide the illusion of giving a damn about your constituents. You gotta at least look at the polling and understand what Americans want to protect, including 87% of Republican voters. But I covered this story not because I want to give Mitch McConnell kudos. No, Mitch McConnell, when given the right opportunity, will cut these programs. I talk about this story because it's important to understand who the real kingmakers are, right? These billionaire donors, who really controls the legislation and whether or not it's ever proposed or passed. And more importantly, it's important for us to keep our eye on this issue. And never let up because the second you do, they will cut these programs, they will privatize these programs, they will do anything their billionaire donors want. When asked, 92% of voters also said they would, uh, they would be more likely to support a Senate candidate who opposes cuts to workers earned social security benefits. This position is overwhelmingly true for Democrats at 97% and also extremely high. 90% among Republicans and independents. And by the way, you really don't have to look too hard to find other Republicans openly promoting changes to Social Security and Medicare. Get a load of this. For the first time around in 2010, I just laid out the reality of Social Security. It's a legal Ponzi scheme. It is. I mean, it's a pay as you go system because we have 70% of our budget off budget. We, you know, we, we call it mandatory spending, mm. uh, but it's completely out of control. No, nobody ever looks at it, it's just an automatic pilot. We ought to put everything on budget so that we're forced to prioritize spending. We ought to be looking at the budget in total every year. Again, that doesn't mean sunsetting anything. That doesn't mean putting on the chop and block. That doesn't mean cutting Social Security, but it does mean prioritizing lower priority spending. 
Yeah, that means cutting Social Security. I mean, what, what do you think it means prioritizing other spending objectives? And what are you referring to? I mean, if you want to talk about fiscal conservatism, if you voted in favor of the $2 trillion in tax cuts for the rich under Trump's watch, which Ron Johnson did, I'm not really interested in hearing about your so-called fiscal responsibility. Sit down. But that's Ron Johnson just recently, a senator, Republican senator, making it very clear, he's targeting Social Security because that is what they all want to do. So don't let them lie to you. Understand who motivates them, what motivates them, and what their real objectives are. And don't let up because they've had their eyes on cutting Social Security and Medicare for decades. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.